This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic. This is part seven of solving compound linear inequalities. And on this video, we're going to solve the following three inequalities and we'll graph the solution on a number line as well as write the solution in interval notation. So here's our first one. So this is saying negative two is less than or equal to x plus one and x plus one is less than two. You can break this up into two separate inequalities. Negative two is less than or equal to x plus one and x plus one is less than two. But if there's only a variable in the middle where there's x plus one, it's actually easier to solve this at once. So we can do two separate problems and then figure out the and part, their intersection. So this would say negative three is less than or equal to x. And over here, solve this other one. This says x is less than one. So now we're trying to find all the places where x is Remember, this means, this is the same thing as writing x is greater than or equal to negative three. So we're saying, all right, where are the places where x is greater than negative three and at the same time less than one? And our solution would be right here, interval notation, negative three, one. But it's easier to go ahead and solve this as one inequality. So let's just move this down for a second. Am I saying, all right, we're going to do it all at once. I want to isolate the x. I'm going to subtract one from all three parts. So this will give me negative three is less than or equal to x is less than one. And I get to my solution quickly says x is between negative three and one. So my answer will be negative three, one, which is exactly what we got doing two parts. And then if I were going to write my solution on the number line, let's say this is zero, three, and negative three, I would have this using interval notation. So that's the same th uh, answer we got doing it as two separate pieces and coming up with our solution. All right, let's do the next one. We'll skip doing it the two separate ways and just go right for it from the beginning. So let's see, we're trying to isolate the x term. And so in the middle here, I have one minus four x. So I want to subtract one from both sides to get started or you could think of that as adding negative one, right? So negative seven plus negative one is negative eight. And in the middle here, I now have just negative four x. And five minus one is four. Now here's the tricky part. I'm trying to isolate x. So I'm gonna have to divide by negative four. But when you divide by a negative, you need to switch the inequality sign. So when I divide by negative four, you can't, that's wrong now. You have to like change that right away. Both of these, you have to change the directions if you're dividing by negative four. So this will give me negative four, negative eight divided by negative four is positive two, and I've got greater than x which is greater than negative one. Now, notice this time both of them are, are the, the direction of the inequalities are the same, right? They, they have to always be if you're gonna have this compound statement here. And they're both greater than, all right? So that means that two, the number on the left, has to be bigger than the number right, which is negative one. This also could be written as negative one is less than or equal to x is less than two. It's usually easier to write it so the smaller number's on the left and using less than so that you can easily put it into interval notation from negative one to two. And let's see, 
kind of running out of space. I'm going to make all this just a little bit smaller so we get my graph on it. So now I'm going to just graph that. So there's 0, 1, 2, 3. Let's say there's negative 3, positive 3. My solutions in between negative 1 and 2. There we go. By the way, let's say you did not write it here. This actually is an incorrect statement the way you're looking at it. Just look at it for a minute. This is wrong. You can't wait and put it down here. If you really want to be correct, you need to show the change at this moment because this actually says, let's see if I didn't put that, whoops, let's see I didn't cross it off and I just sort of left it like that. This actually is wrong because this actually says 2 is less than x. Right? That's what this statement says right here when you're looking at it. Look at it. It says 2 is less than x, but the actual answer is 2 is greater than x. So keep in mind, at the moment you divide by a negative, switch it and keep that statement true by writing that. Okay, let's do one more problem. 4 is greater than or equal to 2x minus 4 minus 1 is greater than or equal to negative 4. All right, so in the inner part, that's the only place where there's a variable again. So let's go ahead and simplify this middle part. We can't simplify the 4 on the left. And again, before we even start, notice it's a greater than problem, and 4 on the left is greater than negative 4. If it was the other way around, it wouldn't make sense. You always have to have the bigger number on the left if you're saying greater than something on the right. So this is 2x minus 8 minus 1 is greater than or equal to negative 4. And then we need to add like terms, so that's 2x minus 9. All right, so now we need to isolate the x, so I'll add 9 to both sides to get started, and it's all three parts. Right? It's not really two sides. So we've got 13 greater than or equal to 2x, greater than or equal to 5. And then just go ahead and divide by the coefficient of 2, right, for 2x. So if I divide everything by 2, I have 13 halves. I'm going to write that as 6 and a half. 6 and a half is greater than or equal to x is greater than or equal to 5 halves. What's that? 2 and a half. Now, again, since it's greater than, it's usually easier to rewrite this the other direction. So if I just move everything here a little to the left, notice that I can also write my answer. This means the same thing as just writing 2 and a half is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 6 and a half. So in interval notation, oops, sorry, oops, there we go. Our answer will be 2 and a half to 6 and a half, right? Here's our solution. And if we're going to graph it, got to come down just a little bit here to make a graph. I'll just, I'm not even going to say where 0 is. You don't really have to since you're doing your own graph. We know 2 and a half is to the left of 6 and a half. So I'll just say there's 2 and a half, there's 6 and a half, all right? And we go in between it. If instead you had a graph where it showed where 2 and 6 were, remember you're going to go, you know, 2 and a half is between 2 and 3. And then 6 and a half is between uh, 6 and 7. And there's our solution. So there's our three problems solving these compound inequalities. This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic.